All right, today's session is going to be on data discovery, usage reporting, and analytics for all your data with Microsoft Information Protection. My name is Ashish, and I have with me my colleague Shimi, and we're going to talk about how you can use Microsoft Information Protection, and then finally look at all the insights that you get from the labeling activities that you do. Before we start off, let's set some context. Microsoft Information Protection helps you protect your data. Right? And essentially, this answers some key questions for most organizations out there, which is, what is your strategy for protecting and managing sensitive information? This is the space that we play in. Right? Do you know where your sensitive data is? Do you know how you're protecting it? And do you know what's happening with that data after you protect it? Key questions in this compliance world that we live in today. With GDPR and the kind of leaks that we're facing today, the monetary impact of everything going on, it is kind of important for you to understand what is happening with your data. And this is where we would help. So this session is going to be very focused on one pillar of that entire process, which is monitoring of your data and understanding what has happened after you have discovered, classified, and protected it. Before we start off, again, just some context setting slide. Information protection and governments has got a singular strategy within Microsoft. It's a unified approach that, as we talked about, covers discover, cla classify, and label. Based on the label, you can take further protection actions. If you're on the protection side, you can encrypt, you can restrict where your uh, files are accessed from, you can add watermarks, headers, and footers. If you're on the governance side, you can talk about retention and when data is deleted. At the end of it all, whatever happens to your data, the logs are collected, information about your data is picked up, and we put it all together in forms and reports that you understand and make it easy for you to take further actions on. Today's session is focused on the last part, the monitor. And a specific to that, we are going to talk about what reports and monitoring you get out of Azure Information Protection capabilities that have gone into preview yesterday. So it's something that you can try out today if you are an Azure Information Protection customer. Key takeaways. These are things that I want you to take away before uh, you leave this session, right? These are important questions that I think most organizations should answer, and we help you answer this question, these questions. One, what is the status of my sensitive data? You have done a great job already of putting together your labels for your organization, deploying AIP, and, and your users are actually protecting data, labeling data. But what has actually happened? How many documents are getting protected? How many users are actually using this data? Which devices? You need that insight to understand what more that you can do, where are your gaps, what's the next step? A key question that some organizations face in the early part of this journey is to figure out where the sensitive data is to begin with. When you have petabytes of data spread across SharePoint sites on-prem, file shares, and all across your desktops, it's sometimes hard to put together the problem of labeling your files when you just don't know what is sensitive and what is not. A lot of customers in that cloud journey, as they migrate from on-premises to the cloud, want to know what they are moving to the cloud before they move it. So where is my sensitive data is a question that's really hard to answer on its own with all the data that you have. But we have a way for you to answer that question, and that's what we're going to show you as well. So I'm going to hand off now to my uh, colleague Shimi, and he's going to do a demo of how all these capabilities come together in our portal in, all the, in the reports that we have. Over to you, Shimi. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to try to answer all the questions that uh, Ashish just asked. Um, first thing that we're going to do, so let me start from scratch, we're going to log in into the Azure portal. And the presentation is off. Any reason why? Uh, okay. Can you help us with that? Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to log in into the Azure portal. Uh, as you can see, my main application, and I hope that all of you have that as well, is Azure Information Protection. We're going to click that. When I'm logging into the application, the first thing I see is the labels. 
So any one of you that uses that, you already should be familiar with that. That's all the labels. But I saw two additional blades, two new ones, the usage blade and the discovery blade. Uh, we'll start with the usage blade. When I'm clicking that, I am getting a lot of beautiful charts telling me what is the status of the AIP client in my organization. So I see the labels, I see protection items, I see the labels breakdown, and I see the application. And we'll drill down into each one to see what it means. So the first thing I'm looking at is the label items. This means, this, is, this represents the number of label action within my organization. So what I want to see here is that the label usage goes up as I install that to more de devices. We know that installing the AIP client takes some time, and it's gradual. So I want to see the numbers goes up. And I want to see that the training that I'm doing is useful. So if I'm setting default label, I also want to see that the number of items here is very high and matches my expectation of how many items I have in my organization. Next one I'm going to look at is the protected item. So protected item represents all the encrypted file in my organization. In this case, what I want to see is that I define the sensitive data as requested, as I want. So in this case, for example, I have like 5%. That means that I, I set the label to protect the label, uh, the, to protect the data, to encrypt the data. And that's what I want to see. I want to see the numbers goes up with the labels as well. Next thing is the users. So that will help me to see how the deployment is going in my organization. So as we said before, the deployment is gradual. And we want to see that if I deployed 10,000 machines, I got 10,000 users that deployed. It should match almost 100% of your user in the organization. Last thing is the devices. Devices is pretty similar to the users. And you want to see that it's almost, almost a match here. We do have some cases when multiple users use the, uh, the same device or vice versa. Specific question? So not yet. We'll show later uh, how you can do that yourself. We have some advanced capability on top of that. Um, the next item is the labels. So the labels shows me the label breakdown in my organization. So in this example, I see that I have 390 items. Most of them are general, which is good, because that's what I set. I set a default label to general. And once I remove that, I see that I have 33 additional items that are marked with different labels, which I, I consider as highly sensitive. And that matches my expectation that about 10% or 8% in my organization are highly sensitive. So I do have representation of each labels that I define here. That's also something that I want to see. I want to see that all the labels that I defined are being displayed here. Last thing we have is the label application. In the label application, what I want to see is that all the applications that are working with the labeling are, have representation here. So for example, we just announced the Adobe Reader integration. We want to see the, the Adobe Reader integration here as well. And that's, that's this blade. The next blade I'm going to see, that I'm going to show, is the data discovery. Data discovery is mainly focused about scanner. Uh, how many of you are using the scanner? OK. So as you know, the APP1 scanner uh, allows you to scan your organization uh, with discovery mode. So you can, sh you can scan file share or SharePoint on-prem and see the data. In discovery mode, what it does, it gives you logs. Today, in order to get the logs, you need to go to the, to the scanner machine itself and look at the Excel and understand the data by yourself. So we give some nice overview of the data that the scanner gives. First thing we're going to see is the labels. Similar to the usage report, we have a label breakdown based on the file repositories that you scan or the SharePoint on-prem that you scan. Uh, another thing that we see is the information types. When I'm looking at the information types, so in discovery mode, the scanner identifies the information types within the file and give me details on that. So that's very useful for us. Um, last thing I'm going to see is the file repository. 
In, so those are all the repositories that I'm scanning in my organization. So each repository has a representation here. It has its path, it's the label file, the protected file, and the information type matches. Now let's look what, I, what can I achieve with this. So first thing, I'm gonna look for credit card in my organization. So I wanna know where do I have credit card in my organization. I'm gonna select the credit card. and then apply. What I'm seeing is that I have 22 files which may contain credit card information within them. 18 of them are labeled as highly confidential and four of them are labeled as general. And that's something that I don't want to see. I don't want to see credit card with general label. I want to see them protected. So I'm gonna drill down into the repository to search for those files. So first thing, we said that we want to look at general. So I'm selecting the general. And we want to look at the credit card. So I'm selecting the credit card as well. Apply. And what I can see now, I can see all the files within the repository that I scan, which has credit card information type within them. I can see the path. I can see the file name, the label, which we select the general, whether they are protected or not, so that's the encryption that we, we have. All the information type matches on those files. So for this, this example, the, this file, for example, has not just credit card, it has also social security number, UK national instance, and other stuff, which make it even weirder the fact that it's marked as general. I can see the last person who modified the file which may help me in the future if I want to do some changes in this file, and the modified date. Now, once I see all this data, the next, the next thing I want to do, I want to take some actions on top of that and make sure that this data is marked properly, or I want to remove this data. So a few things I can do here. First thing, because I have the person, I can talk contact the person and ask him whether this file is, should be there and should be marked as general. And that's the first thing I want to do. Next thing, I can check myself if I have access to there, who has access to those files. Another thing I can do, I can activate for P2 customers, I can activate the scanner in automatic classification mode that, so that whenever you find credit card, it will automatically classify as highly confidential. And that way, I know that all the credit cards in my organization are protected. One more thing I want to show, which is related to the question. So we didn't talk about that. Uh, Ashish is going to talk about it soon. All the data that we have is stored in log analytics. So that's a bit more advanced capability. All the data is stored, your data is stored in log analytics, your customer data. And you can create your own query on top of that. So if you want to create your own Power BI, you have specific groups you want to look at, specific user, you want to see how many users did the downgrade. All that is available here. So all the logs that we collect, and we'll say later which logs do we collect, we collect uh, is available here. You can export that uh, to CSV. You can create your own Power BI on top of that. Azure Log Analytic also has connection to external SIM, so you can connect it to your own SIM system. Uh, all those capabilities are built in within this solution. So you have the data, you can create your own UI, your own queries on top of that. One more thing I want to show before we finish is the WDATP. So Gagan yesterday showed it a bit about that. That's coming soon. We announced an uh, integration in, with WDATP. So whenever, if you have WDATP in your organization, you're gonna get logs on label item from your Windows devices. That means that you have the scanner to scan the file shares and the SharePoint on-prem, and you will have the WIP to scan your endpoints. So whenever it identify a label within an endpoint, it's also logged here. So in the example here, I have two machines, the client one and the client two. I click that. So within each machine, I can see all the files 
that it has. This will help me to investigate in case I have a suspicious machine or I have a compromised machine. I want to know which file this machine has access to. Then I, get, I can get the list. I can also filter out by sensitive, of course. I can say which highly confidential labels I have within this machine, which can help me uh, minimize the risk. And with that, I'll pass it to Ashish. All right. Thank you, Shimi. Please, another round of applause for Shimi for the amazing stuff that has been presented here. All right. Let's get back. So what we have just seen in the last 10 minutes is that using the AIP portal, you can have a look at what is happening with your data across your organization. Your data is coming in from multiple sources, but now you know what is sensitive, what is not, what labels are being used, how many devices and how many users are dealing with labels. What you've also seen is there is a way to look at data that has not yet been labeled or what is happening to your data across your organization. Remember the problem of I don't know where my data is? Now, along with WDATP and the AIP scanner, you have a clearer picture of what is going on, where your data is across your organization, and what you can do about it. So this is like a great step ahead to get control of your data. So put both of these together and such deep insights that weren't possible before, now you have access to. Let's quickly talk about how you can get started with this and what do you need. One, you need an Azure Log Analytics workspace. Now you can sign up for one for free, you need an Azure subscription, and you get 5 GB free per month. Now, typically 5 GB is enough for a large organization, so start off with what you get by default and work with that and see if you need more. Now, the amount of data that you can keep in log analytics by default is for 30 days. And if you need to keep it for longer, well, uh, you'll have to pay for that as a part of Azure Log Analytics. But again, start off with what is there for default, play with what you see, and then expand it as per your organization's rules and requirements. Now, the most important part, because this is all data that belongs to you, I do want to call out that the data in the log analytics workspace is your own, which means you get to choose where you keep this data and how it is kept as per the compliance needs. So this is not something that we own, this is something that you own, and you own the location and the compliance requirements around it, totally up to you. The second thing that you need to do in order to get all these amazing reports is to roll out AIP to your users. And this comes in two forms. One, you need to roll out the AIP add-in, which then collects information of what users are doing on their laptops, desktops, in terms of labeling. The second thing from the AIP point of view is the scanner. This is where the data discovery comes in. It scans your on-premises file shares and SharePoint sites and picks up data from there. There's a specific version that you need to look out for, version 1.38.7. Look out for that. It's available for download, and you can give it to your users, and it'll pull up this data into your log analytics workspace. The next thing that's coming out is our WDATP as a part of RS5. It'll pull out this information from your endpoints the way that Shimi showed in his demo. What's not called out here and is also in play is a bunch of Office clients in preview now, as you do your labels, will also pull out this data. We have a unified labeling experience that we talked about in the beginning, discover, classify, and label. This unified system now includes Office clients, and they too will provide data that will show up in your, uh, in your portal. Another, another one that we will have is everyone that uses the MIP SDK, similar to Adobe, for example, will also send logs here. So you will see all the Adobe here. So in order to configure your analytics, what you need to do is go to the portal and click on Configure Analytics there. It should be available in your portal today, so go ahead and try it out. Uh, click on Create a Workspace if you don't have one today, or if you have an existing workspace, it will show up and you can just connect it to Azure Information Protection as the place to store the data. That's all you need to do. And then all the data flows into this workspace and the reports light up. Isn't that awesome? Okay. With that, we are done. 
Uh, thank you for attending our session, and we are here to take any questions if you have any.